Okay, so when selling a vehicle, um, there's three things that I think, from my perspective, it's important for dealers to think about, having gone through the detail and explained uh, how the regime works. Point one, uh, whether, whether a financier, um, you need to consider whether a financier holds an interest in the vehicle which needs to be removed. Um, that's very important because you've potentially got obligations in your contract and, and under, in selling to consumers, for instance, under the Australian Consumer Law to ensure that you deliver clear title. Um, so in order to fulfil those obligations, you've got to have a think about whether you've got a financier who's got an interest that needs to be removed. Secondly, the terms of sale. So do you actually need to create a, and register a security interest and this particularly applies where you're looking to sell on credit terms and you won't be paid at the time the delivery of the vehicle occurs. And thirdly if you are creating an interest well what sort of interest do you need to create and, and how do you actually go about doing that. Okay so just on the first point uh, does a financier uh, including a, a floor plan hold an interest in the vehicle? Well, if a financier does hold an interest, then as I mentioned, under your contract or, and, and probably under the Australian Consumer Law, if you're selling to a consumer buyer, you've got an obligation to deliver clear title to the vehicle. Uh, you may also have obligations in your finance agreement uh, to ensure the release of any securities prior to selling. So again, there can be different requirements depending on what financiers require. But for, for, for a variety of those reasons, then there are things that you, you will probably need to do. And firstly, you will need to ensure that terms of the finance agreement are complied with. So whatever obligations are in that finance agreement will need to be adhered to. Consumers will need to be given clear title and security interests will therefore need to be released and removed from the register so that the, 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 the customer can get clear title to the vehicle. And you need to determine how and on what terms a security interest can be released and removed. So again, uh, you need to be aware that uh, the regime has broadened significantly the categories of people who can register interests. So it, it's not the case that only a secured party can register an interest. Other people can register interests on behalf of secured parties and people claiming retention of title arrangements exist can register interests. So even if you think that only one or two people can register an interest in a vehicle, potentially anyone can register an interest. Anyone in this room could register an interest uh, in relation to a vehicle that you're happening to sell. Now, it would be an offence to do that if you registered an interest and you didn't uh, have any reasonable grounds to believe that the secured party that you're registering the interest for would have an interest in the vehicle, but potentially anyone could register an interest. And that is a change from the way things currently work where, um, for instance, with ASIC charges, there's a much more constrained process for registering interests and only uh, documents would have to be lodged uh, with ASIC in hard copy showing signatures of the grants or creating interests. Now that we're moving to a completely different process, there'll be a much broader range of people who can actually register an interest. Um, so it, it's, it's much more important to consider whether you can deliver clear title. And again, potentially in dealing with those financiers, they may have all sorts of different requirements and issues to deal with, um, but those do need to be resolved so that the customer can ultimately be given clear title. So in relation to the terms of sale, is the vehicle being sold on a retention of title, vendor finance or high purchase terms? Because if it is, and if the vehicle is being sold and full payment um, or the performance of an obligation needs to be secured, so particularly if before de after delivery the, the, the customer is to pay and you haven't received full payment um, at the time of delivery, then if you want to protect an interest in the vehicle and, and ensure that you've got priority, you can't just rely on a retention of title clause in a contract that you might have at present. That won't be sufficient. You've got to have a contract that allows you to create a security interest and you've got to register it. And the reason for that is if you don't take those steps, you'll be an unsecured creditor. So you'll still have a contractual claim against the customer, but if that customer becomes insolvent, then you've got a problem because you're an unsecured creditor and other creditors are going to have priority, even though your contract says that you own the vehicle. That won't be decisive. How do you create a security interest? Well, 
I mentioned that the most common method of perfection is registration. So registration is affected by an electronic application to the registrar. So it's an electronic process um, for actually registering interests. And what the applicant does is applies, and to use the terminology in the legislation, the, the applicant applies to have a financing statement registered. And they do that electronically. So it's not a hard copy form process, it's an electronic process. And the financing statement will detail the security interest or the personal property um, that's being secured. However, anyone can apply, as I mentioned. So basically, although there is a requirement, as I mentioned, that the person applying must believe on reasonable grounds that the person described as the secured party will, uh, will or will become a secured party, uh, and there are civil penalties and damages which apply if there are no reasonable grounds to register and someone does so anyway, um, this has broadened significantly the category of people um, that can register interests. And so what I've said to a lot of my clients is, you know, and it's funny how often it happens, make sure that you've read contracts because at times people buy things, they don't read the contractual terms, they don't realise that the terms that they've signed will give that supplier the ability to register some sort of interest on the register and then they'll be surprised to learn later down the track that there is actually an interest registered and, and that's occurred because they've signed an agreement unwittingly that allows the other person to register an interest. If an applicant becomes aware that an interest has not or will not attach, they've got five days to amend the, the, the registration and take it off. So if someone thinks that they're going to have an interest, for example, a term sheet or something's been signed that gives them a reason to believe that they're going to have an interest in a, in, in a piece of property such as a vehicle, and then the transaction doesn't ultimately go ahead, they've got five days once they know it's not going ahead to take it off. And we'll talk more about the process of registration later. Chris. Thank you. How are you all feeling? Yeah, okay. Uh, the glass is half full here. Okay. We'll talk about the flow and ebbs in the, in the trade a little later. But now you get the ability to be a secured creditor. Whereas before you had to climb the fence to get the car back and take some risk, now you're a secured creditor and you'll have to weigh that up. Let's go through the process of <coughs> selling a car. Dealership wants to sell a car to a private person and on wholesale. If you have floor plan, sorry, Phil. if you have floor plan, you have to make sure that you get five. You'll have an agreement with your floor your floor plan company in regards to how you get this done. But traditionally now the the full plan finances don't put revs on cars. Okay? So that relationship is changing. How they're going to protect their floor, we can't get clarity on yet. You'll need to have that discussion. You need to give, uh, do a search, and it's point in time only. If you don't get full payment and you want to be a secured creditor, you need to register as in a PIMZ, uh, you register your interest through a PIMZ and perfect it as fast as you can. And you can't backdate them. So you have to have a conversation with your financier and you have to go through the business process and we'll do some practical examples later. Don't start slashing your wrists just yet. <coughs> we'll do some practical examples, but one big, <coughs> one big thing to consider is that the finance on the vehicle follows, sorry I'll go back, back, the finance on the vehicle follows the vehicle. So it's quite possible that you'll buy it and we'll give you a way to protect yourself on the way through. So the finance is going to follow through. So the takeout from this slide is check with your financier. They may have a fixed and floating charge. They may register individual vehicles. We're not going to speak to what the financiers are doing. But the big leap here is that you can be a secured creditor. What that does to wholesale and 
dealer to dealer. We'll talk about it a little later. Don't panic just yet, Tony. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. So just to tease out a couple of things there as a bit of a checklist. Um, Chris mentioned complying with requirements of your financier, first point. Second, ensure that you're actually able to give clear title when you receive full payment and, and really searching is the best way to check that out that you've got. Thirdly, ensure you protect your rights if you deliver a car before full payment is received by creating and registering security interests. So failing to do that will put you in the position of being an unsecured creditor and taking credit risk. Search, create, register, track, and manage all of your PPS transactions and Chris would be delighted to help you with that. Fantastic. We'll move on to buying a vehicle. 